Okay, I don't want to be filmed. Is that okay? Go away, Marvin. I just want to avoid me falling into the water on this small paddleboard. I can show you something interesting. Dive. This was not the plan. Dive with cigarettes. Do, do you hear me? Yes. Don't wake up, Swan. No. Okay. Okay. Here's a nice tip for you if you live on a boat and you went for a little morning swim feeling like the ocean is your home and you have neighbors. driving their dinghy towards you. You just use nature to hide you. What is this list about? Oh, I oh, okay. First we put the... Oh my goodness. <gasps> so so. First we collect some woods. Then we cut the lobster, then we put some salad, then we put the... Oh, no, 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 I don't. Turn it up. Okay, you're doing a great it's job, Eva. We're patient, okay? Uh, don't. We already did the barbecue. Hello to everyone from Barbuda over here. We're trying to answer some of your questions in this episode regarding the difference in living on a sailboat or in a house. Welcome to Nomad Citizen. This life is very, very unique. Okay, I'll just take off the, the thing from the fire because it's too strong. And sometimes it can be really difficult, a lot more difficult than living in a house. In other moments, it is very rewarding. It is not for everybody, but if it's made for you, it will be amazing. Uh, there's another thing I want to get back to. Bubino? Yeah, let, let's try this. Let's try this. And it is covering yourself with algae or sargassum. Well, it is a really, really bad idea. <laughs> because I got this rash from him. It's not itching, but it still is a rash. And now I know, and this is how we learn by doing stupid things, the algae itself is not venomous or doesn't do any allergic reaction, but there are a lot of little creatures like jellyfish or barnacles living in it and that can do bites or um, rashes on your skin. So do not touch it, do not play with it, do not cover yourself with it. One of the big differences is in finding and eating your food. Usually, if you want to have a lobster somewhere in the city, you would go out to a restaurant. But over here, we had local fishermen that brought it to the boat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And now we are going to cook it on the beach. What? Try to to run against the sun. Yes. Okay, I just take off the the thing from the fire because it's too too strong. When it will be a little bit uh, 
light, I will turn the... I don't know how can this be so delicious. We didn't do anything. We just put some olive oil and salt. Leave a little bit for me. Mm, it's so good. So two locals just stopped by. Well, locals, they're from Dominica, but they're fishing here. And they promised Marvin a little lasso uh, so he can go and find his lobster. That would be so nice. They're so nice. Marvin said that, well, we'll see how it goes tomorrow, but Mario Ask them how much it is, and they said that he will pay with his first lobster. Give it to try. Oh. oh, this is good. There's, it's a little bit sandy, <laughs> but it's good. Can you feed me? Can you? You can try. That's it's good. It's good. It's good. I think it's. I would have preferred a little bit more seasoning, but we just didn't have more time. Um, okay, let's go before there's too much waves and not enough light. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday we were talking about the differences between living in a house and on a boat. And this might be one big difference. <laughs> I don't know if this will go to the video. Wow! Oh, this is not how I do my dishes every day, but I'm trying to get there. Both kids seem very, very happy with washing the dishes this way, so um, maybe we will make a ritual out of this. The difference is that we almost completely rely on our water maker to make water out of the seawater. In places like this, like Barbuda, which actually really, really suffered from Irma, if you remember in 2017, the complete island was destroyed, even the coral barrier. Mom told me that you can see it on the footage. As we were relying on this one machine to be able to survive when there is a problem, we have a problem. watermaker is actually not working since yesterday. There's still some good in this because the entire boat life is good and bad mixed together. And the good thing is that I can still use water around us to do so many things like wash the dishes, flush my toilet. Another frequent question is how does the toilet look like? It looks pretty much the same, although it's a little bit smaller, so maybe less comfort if you want to read a novel or something like that. And the other thing is that we shower over in. And third thing is that you have to pump, at least in our toilet. Yeah, so if I really miss something, is flushing the toilet with a button. 
since my army and police period, I did, didn't have the chance to work with gloves. So yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, little pleasures. And what's the bag? But I need to change. Oh, yeah. I do everything with this one because it's my only one. Boat job, lobster fishing, uh, mm. lobster cooking. So soon we need new gloves. Yes, but I, I don't like to, to use gloves to sail. I don't know why. What's that? The trash of the boat. But how is it possible? Already emptied Each so many time I, I go on a place, I find the old pipe for the details. One day we want to have the eating, we need to replace every every pipe like okay. this in the US, maybe soon. Oh nice. Good news guys! It's the big moment, right? If it doesn't work, we need to, to right. go to Saint Martin quick or find water in Barbuda. I don't know if the sound is different because the, the top is open or it's different because there's a problem. Okay, we'll see. But at least it's working for now. I don't know it's working. Marvin is down there in the hole, the generator is on, and... Danny! Yes. Okay, something is happening. I just wanted to say, let's cross fingers that a water maker will work. Okay, let's turn off the generator. Friendly Marvin fixed something that was leaking. <laughs> and as well, two or three things on the generator. So for now, we can make water. Very happy we can make water and stay in this paradise for a few more days and tonight woo! since we're in Barbuda we will take this to San Martin yes and try to find a place where we can uh, maybe dispose it to be recycled or whatever yes and tonight woo! we just wanted to go for a little walk over here and celebrate this victory This is incredible for Europeans. Like for us, this is the most beautiful souvenir from uh, a tropical exotic place. And over here, there are tons of them on the beach. Marvin, we have about one hour since Finia is taking care of the kids and we want to try this present that we got from locals who are out here to fish and to catch some lobster. You want something? I don't know. My favorite thing to drink. Yeah? Give me it too.
they made this specially for us and they delivered it to the boat this morning so wow i just have to say that people here are incredibly amazing and very generous and very nice so antigua barbuda thank you so much guys lasso okay so homemade simple very simple. very simple but it seems to work good so yes we'll see we'll try to find Marvin's lobster from last time open your eyes what can you see around wind of the open sky over the siren sound Another thing since we're here and since you guys asked a lot about differences in boat life and living in a house, I wanted to say that this life is very, very unique and sometimes it can be really difficult, a lot more difficult than living in a house. For example, when, uh, I don't know, we have very bad weather or it's raining a lot or we have rough navigations. This is, this is horrible. Everything broke inside uh, on the floor. I really hope this fast. But in other moments, like today, when we have a little bit of time in this beautiful water and we can find food for ourselves, it is very rewarding and amazing. So um, it is not for everybody, but if it's made for you, it will be amazing. Holding your breath still. You try to find the just sit and wait till you see me fly. You know they'll never catch me for it. You see me fly. The way I put my finger on it. You see me fly. You got it. Then try to tell me you got the wrong guy. You see me fly. You know they'll never catch me for it. What happened while I was explaining things? Your nose is completely black. I don't know. No, really. Look at me. Isn't the sky over there just beautiful? Another difference might be the overall comfort or the amenities, the equipment that you can have on a boat versus in a house. Even though you can have a lot of things and the bigger your boat is, more stuff you can have on it. For example, we have two fridges, one freezer, one washing machine and one dishwasher. So I find that that is already very, very comfortable. That is all I need. You might need to downsize a little bit. So our washing machine is only three kilos and the dishwasher is very small as well, but still they work perfectly and We forgot the camera and it's very beautiful, so I'm like a, a camera delivery guy.
camera delivery guy. I was screaming over there because I didn't know that if you took the keys or not. I imagined you going out to the boat without the keys. And I was like, he'll be so uh, like sad or whatever. Okay, give me some, I will drink water now because. <laughs> We are on a mission today. Donkeys. Donkeys. We need to follow the poo so we can see the donkeys. Good dog. I love you, Bebe, so much. Okay. One of her favorite things about living on a boat is that we really, really get the chance to spend time together. Like a lot of time together. <laughs> Apparently, Tara has a lot to say, <laughs> which is very, very cute. Today, we are finding donkeys, but I don't think out. But those are poop donkeys. Poop donkeys. So, let's find out. Only the sun is so brightly, I can see. And go to the airplane. <laughs> and so, every time it's church cold, we always leave it better, but this time, and we also look the waves. Let's film the waves with our cameras. This was it for today. We didn't find donkeys, but we found something else. squall coming from there so we'll try to get back to the boat before then Good moment to say hello to your mom. Hi, mom. I'm fine. Voilà, minute française pour honorer le lobster. Déjà, c'est super bon. Et en plus, ce qui est bien, c'est que on essaye de le protéger. C'est-à-dire, il y a des périodes de pêche, il y a des tailles de pêche, et il y a des. Euh, voilà, si on trouve une femelle qui a des œufs, on la remet. Ou, euh, ou des spécimens rares, énormes et tout ça, on essaye de les remettre aussi. Ah. La période de, de chasse à Antigua, c'est jusqu'à oh, je sais plus on... jusqu'à début mai. On savait l'année dernière, je sais plus, mais c'est pas c'est court. Pour l'instant, on peut le. Ah. Ouais. Et la bonne nouvelle, c'est que c'est pas évident à attraper. Donc ça s'attrape, hein, mais moi j'en ai vu trois dans ma vie. J'ai pas réussi à les attraper. J'ai vu les gens ne pas réussir à les attraper. Et on a vu des gens même pas les voir. Donc c'est une bonne nouvelle. À part les pêcheurs professionnels, les gens ils, ils ont l'air quand même de pas vider les océans. This is completely amazing guys. We are, we were the only boat here. Like come on, how incredible is this? We decided to move today because we have two more days on this beautiful island before heading north to San Martin 
and we want to discover something else, so we're going to Princess Diana Beach. Right, Booby? This is completely wow. Look at this water behind me. Amazing. That's so beautiful. Yes, it's so beautiful. Vlogging from my favorite place in the world and wanted to share with you guys another difference between a boat and a house and this one we really really love it it is the mobility the amazing thing with living on a boat is that you can actually move your home from one place to another and discover the world it's a crazy world looking to find my place and all they do is Do you like living on a boat? Yay! If ever we leave this lifestyle and we go back to a house and we live a normal life. Uh, I think it will never be normal. Hi, from Ojai, California. Hey, Danny and Marv. This is Gareth and uh, Mimi and Ellie and George, Sailing Duality. This is how we collect our eggs. Be careful. Mr. Karen, can you tell me? It was a little bit scary because I saw a sand bank and I don't trust 100% uh, chart. So, and I saw the, the dip just so uh, at uh, zero, nine, zero, nine, uh, zero 0.9 meters under the keel? No, wait, wait, wait. less one one meter under the keel, I just, just turn around and try another way. We arrived! How beautiful is that? Tomorrow you will see even better because the colors will be amazing sunny setting so we don't really see the, the color of this water anyway we didn't stop at Princess Diana Beach we decided to go all over to the other side of the island uh, we passed Palmetto Point and now we're just near the entrance to Cochington Lagoon with the main town behind us we will do the clearance tomorrow because we're leaving after tomorrow <laughs> Yes, I saw. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you see the green light? Yeah. <laughs> ah, we no. just finished one. Not the green light. The no. sun green. The sun went a little bit green at the end. <laughs> yes, okay. I was. I tried to watch from the shower, but the boat was turning. I was like, okay. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Well, I speak English. Yes. Mm. No, no. Don't play don't, with the don't, seagrass. Nah, don't cover yourself. <laughs> no, but I wanted to say then that we're happy that we turned on the engine for one or two hours because now we have hot water. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She's <laughs> 